Yo, what is going on YouTube? Uh, we are back with another video. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. If you want to watch my live streams every single day in Discord, just click the WAP li link description in, uh, below. Okay, there's a the link that says WAP, and you can watch my live streams every day. Just make sure your Discord and, are connected. And if you want to start practicing on anything other than a demo account that's super cheap, um, just click the Apex um, prop for link in the de description. I use those. I use that Apex firm, and they'll give you the directions how to set an account. Um, I use that to uh, help me get really better and define and, and uh, fine tune my strategy. So, um, probably took about a year, but again, those helped me a lot. So, um, up to you. Don't care if you do. All right. So, for this video, um, I'm going to be talking about how to enter on trend days using inverses. And this is kind of pretty simplistic this isn't really an advanced video it's pretty obvious besides the one thing I will point out is it is a little different than my inverse model right with my inverse model okay we look for some sort of cells to be taken okay and then we look for some sort of bearish favor I got this inverse okay so something like this right looks like a head and shoulders even though we know it's not um, and we don't want this internal liquidity to be hit. Okay, so this internal liquidity wasn't hit. This is what we do. Now, for a trend day, okay, when we've been trending three, four hours, okay, typically we will not dump the rest of the day, okay, if we're if we're longing. Okay, and for a trend day, we don't need to see us hit a major sell side because we already hit sell side way lower. This is kind of how you just enter in the continuation. Okay, so if I go to Tuesday, right, Tuesday we had a nice trend day, all right, and I go to the one minute. Really what you're looking for is any sort of bearish for rally gap, any sort of bearish for rally gap, and for that to be broken, and there's your entry. So the first entry we get is we get a ton of displacement here, okay, and you know this is a ton of displacement because we really displaced over this high, and what I like to do is I'll measure, like, this leg, and if the next leg, starting at this one, if it goes more than 50%, it's generally good displacement. So this goes probably two times the 50%. So this goes, this is just really good displacement. And then you see a bearish rate rally gap right here, come down and retrace, and you see this bearish rate rally gap deliver us to down here, which are probably a higher time frame PD rates. And then as soon as this bearish rate rally gets broken, there's your long, okay? Did we take any sort of sell side? No, we didn't. Okay, but we already took sell side earlier, so in this situation, you don't really need to know that. Okay, now let's say you don't know it's going to be a trend day yet, and you don't want to enter here yet. Okay, and then you see these candles. You see us really displace above some sort of buy side, right? You can really see us displace above this, right? You get a giant candle over it, like it's not even there. Giant candle over it. Now, now you, it's 9:57. It's almost 10 o'clock, and we really displaced over buy side. Now maybe you think, okay, it's going to be a trend day. We just really pumped it open, right? This displacement is not something you want to fade typically. And we're delivering from this bullish for value gap. Okay, here's another one. You see a bullish for value gap. It's a single bearish for value Sorry, bearish for value gap. It's a single bearish for value gap. Okay, it delivers us down into this uh, BISI. And then once we break that, there's your long. Okay, did we take a major sell side? No, because we already did earlier. And we know this is going to be a trend day. Okay, same thing up here. Now, in this leg, same thing. You look for some sort of bearish for value gap to deliver us down to the next bullish for value gap. Okay, do we ever get one here? Nope. So, therefore, there's no entry. In this one, I will be. I will say this. There is a volume imbalance and a volume balance right here. So, maybe if these volume imbalances get closed above, you can try it. I typically don't take inverse volume imbalances. But this is a possibility. But just, I just, the idea is showing you that you want to see bearish PD rays into higher time frame bisies on a trend day, and you want to see those bearish PD rays are broken. And then as soon as they're broken, you you long, and then you just you hold one till the next high, and then you just hold runners and see how far they go. Okay, same thing with like right here. There's no bearish for rally gap that we can inverse here. Okay, and then finally we get this. Okay, but this inverse right here, this is not a good inverse because I think ES, ES at the time did an inverse and it was quite high. But then, okay, then we finally take sell side right here. Okay, we finally take sell side right here. And then we inverse this BPR, okay, which is should be the one of the strongest bearish PD arrays in the market. It is the strongest bearish PD array, okay. 
Um, but BPR is the strongest bullish and bearish PD array. So we get this BPR, and then we close above it. There's your long, because at this point, we know it's going to be trend day. And I get some people might take this loss, and that's fine. In hindsight, I wouldn't have taken it, probably because of ES. Okay, you need to be watching both. Uh, but really make sure you're checking ES and NQ. I don't think ES ever closed above here. Um, it may No, I don't think it did. Um, but like in this situation, some people may take this loss, and that's okay. This is a good loss to take because what I'm teaching you basically says, okay, take this. But you probably weren't paying attention to ES. And this one, ES, I think was broken above too, and NQ broke above, so this one is good. And it's better because we also purge a sell side too. Um, and you can see like in live time, we just we we see that we don't displace under this, right? This isn't hindsight. In live time, if I saw this can right here. And I don't see a lot of displacement under this low. And then this BPR is broken. I know it's bullish. Okay. Okay. I'm not just saying this because it's hindsight. It's really this candle that determines, okay, are we going to displace below this or not? And in live time, if I went back in replay mode and went and just saw this candle, that looks bullish to me because we don't really displace under this. And then I wouldn't enter long yet, but I would wait for this to be violated. Okay. And if you want to be safer in this situation, you can wait for this to be violated, which is fine. We violate it, and you long, and the long works. But I mean, if you see a BPR violated, generally we you should anticipate this being violated, okay? Because this is a very strong PD array. This should not be violated. Okay, same thing. We just keep going up and up and up. Okay, right here, another one. We get a small bearish area. I get inverse that brings us back to the high. Okay, that's another one. Um, here's the next one I see. Okay, bearish array. We never inverse it. Come down. And then finally, we end up visit, inversing it right here. Right here, we close above it. And then we close above it, and it brings us to the next high. Right, so see see the pattern now? We just close above it, retest, it, go to the next high. There's your target. Boom, you're all out. Okay. Um, you got this one right here. This one, it actually, this one was not the greatest. Um, this one, I think there's a bunch of time distortion. This one, you finally get a close right here above it. Um, and then once you get the close above it, you target this high. This one, you probably would have gone south out of break even because you would have moved your south to break even when we hit this bearish PD rate. Because, because there is a bearish PD rate to the left after this close that we're not delivering from, but it's still there. I move my south to break even when we hit it because you don't know if we're going to reject it or not. Versus usually if this wasn't here and it was a singular inverse, I'd move us out to break even when we hit here and I'd expect us to here, but this kind of holds us down and I would have gone south to break even. Um, another one right here, very textbook, right? It's a bearish area I got bleeding down. And this one we did happen to take the low, but like I said, we don't really need to take the low on a trend day. Uh, this one we take the low, you get a, this, retrace, okay, just works very nicely. Um, and then really, yeah, all I'm looking for is these bearish for rally gaps getting inverse, right? Right here, another perfect example. Inverse, holds the support, brings us back to the next high. Okay, and then here's 4 o'clock. So this one obviously doesn't matter because it was 4 o'clock at this point. But again, most of the day, right, you can see how you kind of enter. You look for these any bearish for rally gap going down with decent displacement like this one. Okay, if I backed away from my screen, you can see this pretty easily. Any decent displacement going down, and then you look for that to be inverse, right? We don't even have to take sell side, right? We didn't even take this sell side, okay? Does that matter to me if it's a trend date? Not really. We don't really have to take it. Um, some people think you do have to take it, but, like, again, we don't have to take the major sell side uh, for the model on these days. So, again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I know some other people DM me kind of noting this as well, and this is why I wanted to give the video out because it's – uh. Some people struggle with trend days, but I mean, this is how you really conquer a trend day and get the most out of it, um, in my opinion. So let me know if you have any questions, and other than that, peace out.